Everybody, welcome. Uh, we're very excited to have Secretary Perry here this morning, but uh, let me first of all recognize we have Congressman Foster here. Bill, stand up. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good. Okay. All right. So uh, we're going to get a welcome from uh, our Fermi site manager, Mike Weiss, and then I will introduce the secretary. So, Mike. Yes, sir. Thank you, Nigel. <laughs> well, welcome. Full house today. This is impressive. Uh, I have the privilege and pleasure of having spent some time this morning with the Secretary of Energy and his team, uh, Dan, Luke, Tony, and others, who I'm sure I'll forget their names and I apologize. I had a chance to, to go through and get some great tours by the lab's team. Uh, and as Congress, Congressman Foster and, and all of us, we uh, had a chance to interface with the Secretary, which is my boss, so thank you for coming here and making us look good in front of my boss. Uh, I would say I learned four things today about the secretary that I didn't know. You can always go and Google uh, the secretary and, and find out a lot of information, but I found out four things that I think are important for us here at Fermilab to know about this secretary. Number one, he cares about people. Everywhere he went, everywhere we went, he asked about the person. He asked, where are you from? What do you do? Why are you doing this? What can we do? It was impressive, very impressive. He cares about people. He cares about this mission, and I know that he's offered several times on this uh, little jaunt through the lab, what can I do to help? Let me know how I can help, and I'm sure Nigel and all of us will uh, take him up on that. Uh, third, I would say that he has an incredible desire to learn. I've never heard so many questions from somebody walking through the lab as I've heard from the secretary, which is very encouraging. And then the most important thing I learned, and that's probably the most important thing for us here at Fermilab, at one of his national laboratories, he listened. He listens to everything that people are talking to him about, and he really is trying to understand and engage, and he'll be a great advocate for us. So I'm really proud and privileged to be part of this celebration. So Nigel, will you complete the formal introductions? Thanks, Mike. All right, so this morning, we're fortunate and honored to have the Secretary of Energy, Rick Perry, to our laboratory. Rick Perry currently serves as the 14th United States Secretary of Energy. He's responsible for maintaining a safe, secure, and effective nuclear deterrent, reducing the threat of nuclear proliferation. He oversees the U.S. energy supply, environmental cleanup, and all 17 national labs, including Fermilab. The secretary toured Rock West. He heard about Albion F and Dune, neutrinos, saw the PIP2 injector, uh, heard about the world's most powerful neutrino beam. He saw the LCLS2 cry modules that we're building for SLAC. Uh, he experienced an ultra strong magnetic field in the G minus two experiment. And he went underground to see the Nova detector and hear about uh, quantum sensors and quantum computing. He stopped by to see our bison. Secretary Perry grew up the son of tenant farmers. I had to look up what tenant farmers were. They are people that pay rent to farm the land, kind of like uh, we, our farmers here do for the corn. In the tiny West Texas community of Paint Creek, he was an Eagle Scout and he went to Texas A&M where he earned a degree in animal science. So my daughter earned a degree in animal science and I called her up in California and I said to her, Sarah, what is it animal scientists say to one another? Could you give me some, <laughs> you know, inside uh, story that I could give to the secretary? And she said, I don't know. All right, so he's a veteran of the United States Air Force, flying C-130 tactical airlift aircraft in Europe and the Middle East between 72 and 77. He was the Texas Commissioner of Agriculture for two terms and the longest serving governor in Texas history, having led the world's 12th largest economy from 2000 to 2015. 
Under Secretary Perry's leadership, I guess under Governor Perry's leadership, uh, Texas became the national leader for job creation, innovation, and population growth. State economy grew by over two million jobs while he was governor. Interestingly, Texas leads the nation in wind energy, 37 gigawatts. It's in the top 10 in solar, and it's of course number one in oil. So there's no question that he comes from the energy state. And that's why they chose him to be the Department of Energy Secretary. That's not the reason they chose him, but I thought I would <laughs> try my best there. All right. So now that I've warmed up the crowd, uh, Secretary Perry, you can uh, come on out. <laughs> Thank you. Are you going to be down there? I'm going to sit down. You sit there. George. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> this could be a TED talk. <laughs> and uh, Congressman, thank you for being here. Um, Mike and Nigel, to both of you, uh, and to, to all the staff that we had the opportunity to talk to today, what a uh, fascinating group of, of men and women. And uh, you, know, you feel like you're on a global trip when you walk around Fermi because of all the international um, individuals who are here and, and, and which is I think one of the great um, the complexities of, of what we do and, and uh, in this world that we live in today and um, having all of the, the different countries that are represented here and the, 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 uh, the people that are represented and, and it's just there's, a, there's this mosaic in the and a kind of a quilt, if you will, and, and the, the strength and the fiber of, of, of a material uh, a lot of times is in the, the way all of those fibers are woven together. And, and you didn't think you'd hear that out of an animal science guy today, did you? It was kind of like, he was, he was impressed that I would even know the word ungulate uh, as we went out and looked at the bison. So, uh, uh, and, and I don't know, Mike, whether it was you or whoever it was to telling people to go on to Google and find out everything they need to know about me. Dude, come on. I, I want to tell you something interesting about this. this I, I, I truly uh, say this with, with all uh, my heart, my belief. This is the, the, the greatest job I ever had in my life was to be the governor of Texas. We, it was a fabulous uh, job. I, I enjoyed it. We made a difference in people's lives, uh, you know, whether it was economically or whether it was on the uh, the energy side of things that we did with wind and solar and uh, all the different uh, aspects of, of, of the energy industry that we got to do. And, and Texas became, uh, the, the Texas Medical Center, for instance, is, is the largest medical center in the world. There are more doctors and nurses and researchers and scientists that go to work there every day than anywhere else in the world. And, and so I became really intrigued with uh, helping them and to be able to lure people into uh, to the Texas Medical Center, and this, this, it was a great job. But the coolest job I ever had in the world, being the Secretary of Energy. And it's because of, it's because of what you all get to do every day, and I got a little dose of it again today, or actually a big dose of it. I think I got hit by a whole bunch of neutrinos. Uh, <laughs> he said, stand right here, sir. <laughs> but it, 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 it really is a fascinating uh, agency, the things that we do. Uh, all of you would be, um, you would be intrigued with all of the different tentacles uh, that the Department of Energy is involved with uh, around the world, and, and in the vast majority of the time, uh, in a very positive way in, in people's lives. And, uh, you know, I, I'll give you one example of this. Early on in my, uh, my, my tenure, um, matter of fact, it was the first international trip that I took uh, yeah, I, I was going to Rome uh, for the G7, representing the United States as the Secretary of Energy with six other of my comparable uh, ministers from around the world. And, and we, had a great, we had a great meeting, and, and it was, uh, uh, I was on my way back and had just loaded and kind of getting settled. And uh, a fellow was walking by on the aisle, and, and you can tell when somebody recognizes you, uh, and, and, you know, he did this double take, 
And I don't know, you know, I don't know what's fixing to interact here. I don't know, does he recognize me that I was the governor of Texas, that I ran for president two times, that I was on Dancing with the Stars? Yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I don't know what's fixing to happen here. But he just reached down and he said, uh, Mr. Secretary, and he gave me his name. He said, I work with you. And I said, well, I hope you're happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> and we shook, and I said, and he had his family with him. He was guiding his family along. Um, and uh, I said, when you get settled and we get leveled off, I said, I'll come visit with you and just... So I did, and I went back and, and properly introduced myself, and we talked a little bit. And I said, so where is it that, and this was in, this was in, uh, uh, this was in Rome. I said, where is it that you would be working with me over in this part of the world? And he said, Interpol. So those of you that know some of the other things that we do, um, <laughs> understand the, the depth, the breadth of this agency. And 66% or so of that budget that we have at the Department of Energy is over on the nuclear weapon side. It's, we make sure that they're modern, that they work, that they're um, properly stored, protected, etc. And the other third of that budget is in a lot of different areas. But, and, and, I, and I share this with all the, listen, I, I'm not bashful about uh, being very truthful about what I see. The 17 national labs are extraordinary jewels that this country um, has in its possession. And the things that you do right here in Fermi, and your ability to change people's lives in a powerful way has never been greater than it is today. The reason I'm so thankful that the president asked me to, to come and to serve is because you all as partners in this process, and I, I consider myself just to be blessed to be on the team, have the potential to change people's lives in such a powerful way. You know, when we look at the theoretical things that, uh, I don't know where my theoretical Argentine is in, in, in the crowd here. I know she's in here somewhere. Um, but there you are. The, 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 the theoretical things that you're working on and then the practical application of what comes. I mean, to, to me, that's the most important part of this job for me, is to be able to, and, and, and it's part of my background. I mean, when you think about, you know, I think one of the reasons that President Trump said, hey, Perry, I want you to come. Well, well let me just tell you, this was a pretty short job interview. Um, I, went to, I went up to New York City and sat down and we had a short conversation. He talked a little bit about the uh, energy industry as you would think that, you know. And he said, look, Perry, this is pretty simple. Here's what I want you to do. He said, I want you to do for American energy what you did for Texas. And, and that translation for me was, I want you to go into that agency and I want you to identify the, 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 the places where you can commercialize and take basic research and, 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 and basic research is so important, Bill, as you know, to all of this process and being able to take that basic research and, and, and we throw a lot of jello at the wall. I get that. And from time to time, some of it sticks <laughs> and that's a good thing. And you know, some of it runs down the wall and then that's okay. That's, that's why we do what we do. But the point is, being able to take what you do and affect someone's life in a positive way, you may never know about it. It may never, it may never be obvious to you that the projects you're working on, the things that are, that are, that are occurring, whether it's 
It, it, it's, you know, and, and that's what Fermi was created for in its, in its, its establishment. I, I started my college career the year this laboratory was being created. Now, I actually went to college to be a veterinarian. I didn't go to college to be an animal scientist. Organic chemistry changed my life. <laughs> the dean of the vet school called me in after my second, my, end of my second year, and he said, James, James is my given name, James Richard. <sighs> Dr. Price, James, I'm, you don't really want to be a veterinarian, do you? I said, oh, yes, sir. I said, you know, I drove into town, 16 miles into town every summer to work for the veterinarian. It was, it was, my, it was my dream. It was, it was what I, it, it, it sustained me. And I told him that story, working for that veterinarian. It was, it was my dream to do this. He said, I'm looking at your transcript, son. You don't want to be a veterinarian. <laughs> he sent me over to the animal science department. Uh, you know, a lot of times life is like that, you know, as you've got, you got your plans. I ran for president twice. <laughs> I, was in the, I was in the Oval Office, I don't know, a month or so ago, and the, the president said, Perry, you wanted this job once upon a time, didn't you? I said, yes, sir, and I'm damn glad you've got it, sir. <laughs> but enough of all of that. Uh, the, the, the fact is, I'm, I'm incredibly happy that God's kind of stuck me in this place that I am right now. I get to work with uh, amazing men and women. Um, you, you, Congressman, you get this better than most people. Uh, and it, it's, you're one of, this is your people. Not only are they your constituents, this is where you came from. This is your, you, this is you to your core. And, and I, I just want to tell you, um, having someone like him in Congress is invaluable. And to, he knows what you do. He is passionate about what you do. He is able to explain to lay people like myself and the other members of, 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 of Congress what you do and why it's so important that not only do we support it, we fund it, we, we propagate it around the globe. And I want to go back to this whole issue of international uh, engagement and the importance of this. I think it's one of my very important uh, directives to be a spokesperson for these national labs in an international way, to create the relationships, the personal relationships with my counterparts around the world or the leadership in other places uh, around the world as we, as we draw them in. I'm headed to Davos, to Switzerland, in, in, a, uh, in a, about 10 days to talk to individuals. I'll sit down with my counterpart from Saudi Arabia. I'll sit down with my counterpart from Russia. We will talk about, uh, obviously, the, the energy side of things, but also the scientific side of things, because most of my counterparts around the world are involved, and obviously they would all love to have national labs like we do but to be able to interact with them, to be able to, uh, to, to, to connect people like Nigel and individuals that can bring not only their intellect, but also their resources to a place like Fermi. Because that's the future of how I think we're going to be. I mean, the, the U.S. and what we do in a scientific way, when you look back into history, when you... Every day that I walk into the office and I go down to uh, the, 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 the corner where my office is, I walk by a letter from Albert Einstein, a letter to Franklin Roosevelt. And it reminds me of the potential of what the Department of Energy has every day. And the work that you are doing here truly is 
and has the potential to be incredibly mind-blowing. Um, I want to... I want to... Oh, I remember now. And, and, and here's, here's the kind of one of the subsets that I wanted to really drive home to you. And it's in the next generation that you're going to... Um, you're going to create a, a desire in their, in their minds, in their hearts, in their souls to, to do what you're doing and to, and to carry the research that you're involved with today to the next generation. And so the, the kids that show up in, 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 in STEM programs that come here that are uh, open to the... the, the I, 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 from time to time I call it magic because I don't understand it, um, that, that, you're, that you do, the, the science that you're involved with, the, the, the ability to just create in them this desire to be like you. I know some of you don't want to be role models, but the fact is you are. And I just wanted to come today and, and be a part of the cheering section, if you will, and say that's an, that's an important part about what you do. Yeah, we got projects over here that, you know, on the quantum computing side, on the, uh, the material side. I mean, I've, I saw so many fascinating things that you all are working on. The, 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 the ability of, of analyzing these neutrinos and, and, and really getting to the basic question of how this matter got formed. And, but all of the things that get answered in the process of getting to that final answer and the lives that get changed and the quality of life, whether it's in the proton work in some you know, at MD Anderson, Houston, Texas, it's finding cures for diseases that are affecting your family. That's what we can't ever let, we cannot let our general public ever be removed from that's our mission. That's our goal. That's why it's so important that these laboratories are funded properly that we, we share that story on a regular basis. This important work that we do. The next, the next big things that happen in the world will come from the United States. And a lot of them will come, maybe not singularly from what we do in our national labs, but certainly the potential is there with our partners, other governments, universities, certainly the private sector, as our partners. I wanted to come here today and say thank you. Thank you for what you do. I'm humbled to be on your team. Um, I will be forever thankful that I had the opportunity. Uh, I have no idea how long this lasts. Um, but it's an exciting time to be a part of experiments that change people's lives. And that's what you do. And I will do my best to be a, a good and a um, cogent storyteller of what happens in places like Fermilab. Because I think it's important for the people of this country, it's important for the people of our globe to understand what is going on here, the vast potential that is here, and to be a proponent of what you do every day. I'm proud to be a part of that. So, Nigel, I'm going to wrap it up here, and I think we're going to open it up for some questions, and we'll try to, if, if, uh, if it has anything to do with neutrinos, please ask me. <laughs> I will pass them on to uh, Nigel, who will then find someone who actually Likewise. knows the answer. <laughs> so, uh, okay. thank you.
Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. Writer, there is a chair there if you. All right, so uh, we're going to take a few questions. So uh, uh, somebody put up your hand. Uh, Vanessa, front row, microphone. Thank you. Please. Thank you. Welcome to Fermi Lab. Who are you? Secretary Perry. My name is Vanessa Peoples. How hey, are you doing Vanessa today? Peoples. Howdy. Good. Where are you from? I'm from Chicago. Really? And I serve here at the That's lab. That's like asking somebody if they're from Washington. And, yeah. and from time to time, you'll find somebody who's actually from Washington, from Washington D.C. And I was kind of like, wow, I thought everybody from, moved. Right. Anyway. I'm actually from Chicago, and but I I'm serve as the chief financial officer here. Right. So I really appreciate well, your comments about. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I really appreciate your comments about funding and yes, the importance of funding. But my question is simple. I would be very uh, interested in knowing what your key priorities, some of your key priorities are for 2018 yeah. uh, for the Department of Energy in general or uh, the Office of Science in particular. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit, uh, I'll, I'll be a little bit broad and, and initially I may get to some specifics about um, some of the projects, but I, I, I mentioned in my remarks a few minutes ago about how important it is to be able to commercialize the things that we do. Uh, yes, basic research is incredibly important, and I've been a, you know, a supporter of basic research from when I was a boy legislator, and I was an appropriator, by the way. Uh, I, I, I learned the uh, the art and science of appropriating uh, as, a, as a legislator and then as a statewide elected official, I was on the other side of that, down on my knees begging uh, to the, but, but the point is it, it's important for us to, to fund that basic research and making sure that our labs are, are funded in an appropriate way. Now, with all that said, having been a manager, having been the governor of, of a, the 12th largest economy in the world. You have to be successful with your, your projects. You have to be able to run the business. Nigel and I had this conversation about some big projects in the world. Maybe some big projects that we worked on historically that the record of delivering wasn't too, wasn't too good. I get, you know, I'm pretty much on the record. There's a, there's a big multi-billions of dollar project out in South Carolina called MOX. And it is a very, very deep and dark hole that I don't see the, I don't see the, I, I don't see how I can go to the American people and say, let's just put another $280 million in this or $500 million or whatever that number is. And there's really no, there's no good outcome other than you put the money in it and you kept some people working. That's not, that's not what the American people want. I don't think that's what any, anyone frankly wants. We want to see good results. We walked through a project today was it the muon? G minus two, yeah. That was built on time and below budget. Now that's the kind of stuff I like to get up and go talk about. <laughs> so my point is, basic research is important. And we're gonna fund basic research, but it needs to be done in a way, Congressman, that you and I can stand up and defend. Now, over and above that, and what I'm really interested in, and what, I, what really gets me, me going is the taking of that basic research, transitioning it over here into a place that it can be commercialized, and the product of that, the result of that, is some either great product, or the product may be a healthcare delivery to, I mean, MRIs, a great example of MRIs 
get their root right here. Best I can tell, the Tevatron and the yep. work that was done and the MRIs and the people's lives that are saved today. Who's, is it GE? A little General company? Electric. Yeah. Little it was company. an offshoot of General A little Electric. company called General Electric that put a lot of people to work because th- th- that is, that's what I'm about. I'm an economic development manager. That's what I did as the governor of Texas for those years. That's what President Trump was talking about. That's what he was intimating when he said, here's what I want you to come do at that agency. So that's going to be, that'll be my focus. Now, all of you get affected by that in some, some different ways. Um, But basic research that is appropriately funded, that some of that gets spun off and we create wealth and new jobs, et cetera. That's what you can expect out of me. So so you had mentioned MD Anderson earlier on, Mm -hmm. and MD Anderson has a small proton accelerator, which they use for cancer treatment. The very first one in the United States was built at... Fermi Lab, I'm, I am not and it's in surprised. Loma Linda Hospital in California, I'm and it's treated surprised. thousands of people. Yep. But we, we never talk about it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> not enough. Yeah, not enough. Exactly. But that impacts people's lives. Any uh, any other questions I hear? Rich Stanick will be interesting. Rich is a engineer leading the LCLS two project that you saw this morning. Right. So, uh, Rich. Secretary. You, Rich. Yes. Where are you from? Uh, from Chicago, actually. <laughs> <laughs> starting to, Two in starting a row. to find a little bit of... Two in a row. So are you a, are you a White Sox fan or a Cubs fan? <laughs> uh, I'm actually a White Sox fan. Okay. Ah. I'm just curious. Cause, yeah. Cause but I he, enjoy going to both games. Yeah. So. yeah. No, sorry, I didn't mean to... Don't, don't let my question affect the one you're going to ask me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, on the LCLS2 project, um, we have the opportunity to work with uh, many of our colleagues at other national laboratories, uh, SLAC, Jefferson Lab, Argonne. Uh, and partnership between the laboratories is a big part of us being able to complete the project. Yeah. On, using the infrastructure that exists already and the expertise that exists in different laboratories and calling on that to get the project done efficiently. So um, I'm curious, you talked a little bit about the strengths of the National Laboratory, if you wanted to elaborate on that, or more importantly also what what you think could be improved in the laboratory system. Yeah, I think it's really important, thank you. Uh, How did the White Sox do this year? No, okay, it's a, it's a rebuilding year. The, I think it's really important not to get siloed. Um, you know, our, our 17 labs have, certainly they have missions. As a matter of fact, one of the things Nigel gave me when I walked in here was your mission statement. And that's, that's, a, that's a really important part of managing. It's a really important part of leadership to, to give everybody a a piece of paper that says this is what we're about, this is what, who we are, this is what we believe in, and this is where we're going. So well done on that, sir. Um, not l- allowing yourself to be siloed, to be these, these firewalls that all too often get put in place, um, we, we have to guard against. And uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a natural thing to do. It, it's, you know, it's kind of like, I, I, I've got my little area over here, my expertise, I want to protect that. I, um, it happens. But I would, I would tell you to, to try to push down those. One of the things that you will see us do is to try to um, use pressures as we have the ability, to, and, I, and I say pressures in a, in a positive way, uh, to, to um, push you to go work in different areas, to cross-pollinate, 
because one of, and, and, and not just in, in, in labs, but actually between agencies. Uh, I'm in the process of trying to get the DOE, Health and Human Services, the VA, and the Department of Defense working together on one project dealing with veterans' health. Somebody said, wait a minute, what's the Department of Energy getting involved in veterans' health for? And I said, well, uh, I said it's, it's personal and it's professional. On the personal side, I've, 10 years ago, I got associated with a young man who had some very serious post-traumatic stress, physical issues, and I found that the Veterans Administration had failed him. Our government had failed him. And I started becoming very intrigued with how do you deal with these issues of the brain that have been either, have been traumatically affected in some form or fashion. And as I got to this agency, what I found was that the department does a lot of work through the years on the electrical impulses and how the brain works, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, I'm in the process right now of uh, getting those four agencies of government to work together, to talk to each other, to share information. And so <laughs> I got a little bit of uh, your angst and frustration, uh, if those of you who have tried to force uh, but I think it's really important for us to do that, is my point with sharing that, that story with you, because at the end of this process, hopefully some people's lives are going to be changed. We're going to get to see some things that maybe we wouldn't have seen anywhere else. Don't know. We're going to throw some jello at the wall, Mike. But it's important to not allow yourself, the, the project you're working on, get insulated or that you can't bring in somebody to go, wait a minute, let's take a look at, have you thought about, don't be afraid of that. So anyway, okay, we're that, that would be my uh, advice to you. One more question. Excuse me. Paul Derwent. Get the microphone to Paul. Paul, we met, right? Yeah. Paul gave you part of the tour. Yeah. yeah. So, yes, I'm Paul Derwent. I'm a scientist in the accelerator division and working on the PIP2 project. Were you the uh, one that had the boys that were? No, that was no. one of my well, colleagues. Elvin Harps. That's oh, that was Elvin. Yeah, he had the, the boys were pilot, Air Force pilot. I'm not from uh, Chicago, but my father was. <laughs> <laughs> I guess my father still is. Everything goes back away. to yes. Chicago. <laughs> um, thank you very much for making us you know, Fermilab, your first visit on your national lab tour. Well, this, this year. year. This, this year. year. <laughs> um, 2018. Uh, international partnerships are a big part of Fermilab's past and probably future successes, and the project I'm working on is dependent on them. You know, how do you see your role? You, know, you, you touched on it earlier in your yeah. discussion. In helping us build uh, with the science from the other countries, collaboration with the other yeah. countries, specifically, you know, the national laboratories collaboration with other national laboratories in other countries. Here's what I learned as a, uh, and, and this actually became abundantly clear to me as a governor, and as a governor who was trying to go out and, and uh, create an economic climate where people were comfortable, they could come and risk their capital. And, I would, I would go to a lot of other states, uh, recruit businesses. I actually would go to uh, different countries. Uh, I went over to Stockholm in the late 2000s to recruit a cancer specialist from the Karolinska Institute. Mm -hmm. And who, by the way, we were successful bringing him into to Houston and he's been a, uh, he's actually a physicist. Mm, that's uh, good. That, uh, that's, uh, that's what I hear. And, <laughs> Physicists are good people. <laughs> but, the, but the point is, um, we, we, need to, uh, we need to not be afraid to bring people from across the world into our fold. 
I'm a, I'm a big believer that if you'll uh, ask people and you'll, you'll show them and let them get comfortable that you can be trusted, that you can be loyal, uh, that if you'll do business with them, they'll be a lot less likely to fight you or to be in conflict with you. So the national labs are one of the, I happen to think, one of the more um, practical ways to do that in, a, in, 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 in our global outreach. I mean, obviously, you all aren't afraid to go to a lot of different countries and ask their best and brightest to come here and be a partner. Our reputation is that's the, the United States is where you want to be if you're working on particle physics. This, this is, I mean, if, if you want to be involved in the next big thing, if you want to be uh, where the, the technology is, is the best, where they're, uh, you know, they're, they're funding this and, and you come to the United States. So we have a good product to sell. It's people like Nigel who has to analyze who the talent is to, to go to go get them. One of the things we talked about, I said, listen, I'm, I'm fixing to go to, uh, I'm fixing to be in Switzerland uh, at Davos. I'm going to be at uh, uh, India the end of February. I'm going to be in Argentina in June. I said, tell me who the people are that I need to talk to there to share with them what we're doing at Fermi so that I can ask them to come and participate. Why don't you just take me with you? <laughs> Does he have the budget to do it? <laughs> I've learned that. I've learned that process. I'd be happy to have you go. I'm not your father. You gotta. You gotta pay your own way. No, but I mean seriously, this is the kind of stuff that. Uh, that it's it's why. You know, I I listen. I don't. I don't ever want to criticize anybody for. Uh, uh, you know their background or whatever they did when I when I got when I got chosen as the Secretary of Energy they went well you know you're following two PhDs in physics yeah Nobel Prize winner. yeah no, yeah Nobel Prize winner <laughs> and I was kind of like okay yeah. <laughs> but I told him I said look here's here's the way I look at that and 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 uh, Secretary Moniz and I are really good friends uh, Ernie and I are, are, are truly good friends. I didn't know Stephen Chu that well, but they're brilliant, great, and good people who were willing to stand up and basically say, you know, here am I, put me in there. I'll, I'll, go, uh, I'll go be the secretary. But we all bring different traits and talents. I said, look, if you want somebody, your secretary of energy, that can build you an atomic bomb, I'm probably not your guy. But if you want somebody who can go sell this agency, that knows how to work with people like the congressman, who knows how to go retrieve the dollars, who knows how to go do economic development, I said, you might like what you get out of me. And, and that's what I bring to the table here, and it's what I'm passionate about. I want to go to some places and recruit people to come here, recruit people to invest here, because we have a great product to sell. Fermi and the 16 other labs that are out there are an extraordinary product to sell. And I happen to think that the things that come out of these laboratories, the opportunity for development may be as great as it's ever been in the history of our country. This is a fabulous time to be an employee of a national lab and having an administration that is very supportive of what you're doing. Thank you, God bless you, and I look forward to continue being on your team. Thank you. I got a present for you. All right, I, I know what that is. <laughs> so we, we wanted to give the secretary something to put in his briefcase when he goes home. So he, he's seen a lot. When you go through TSA with this, <laughs> I'm telling you, it is the most magic moment in time. Because right. I take it out and I go, what? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's see if I remember Not what I was really. going to say. <laughs> 
So uh, Fermilab is an accelerator laboratory, as you noticed this morning. This is a part of an accelerator. You saw these yep. cavities. And the message is these can be used for many different things, Indeed. as you've been talking about. And so this is something right. for you to remember your visit by. Thank you, Thank you very Thank much you. for coming. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you.